Hello, it's lovely to be back. Um, now I've decided that I'm going to get back to reviewing books, reviewing history books, so I thought I'd actually do them like this on video. And the first book that I've picked to do is this book by Gareth Russell. It's called The Palace from the Tudors to the Windsors, 500 Years of History at Hampton Court. So a big thank you to Gareth and his publisher William Collins for sending me a review copy of the book. I'm a huge Gareth Russell fan. His biography of Catherine Howard, Young, Damned and Fair, is one of my all-time favourite history books and I can't say enough good things about his book on the Titanic, The Ship of Dreams. So I was dying to read The Palace. And... I was not disappointed. And now I have another all-time favourite history book. And not just all-time favourite Tudor history book, all-time favourite history book. I loved it. I loved every minute of reading it. It was what I can only describe as a delight. I carried it around the house from room to room, enjoying five minutes here and there. Well, perhaps more like 20 minutes here and there as I did my chores or when I took a break from my work. It felt like an indulgence reading it. It was such a treat. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that a book on Hampton Court is going to be a dry read, that it's going to be about the palace's architectural history. Well, you'd be wrong. It's not that at all. The palace is the setting. It's more of a beautiful backdrop. And as novelist Philippa Gregory says on the cover, there's a quote from Philippa Gregory on um, the very front cover, she says, if a house could gossip, this is the book that Hampton Court would whisper. And that's so true. The building has seen so much history, so many people, so many lavish events, births, deaths, marriages, affairs, it's been a refuge for some, a place of sad memories for others, a home for many, from the very privileged to the lowliest servant. If only its walls could speak, and they actually really do in Gareth's book. In the palace, Gareth takes us through the history of the palace but it's a social history. It's told through the people who owned it, lived there or visited it. The prologue takes us back only to 1953, to a ball held at Hampton Court Palace for the new Queen Elizabeth II, 600 years after the first monarch, Edward III, had arrived at the palace. We're then taken back to the very beginnings of the palace as a manor owned by the Knights Hospitallers. Before we have a wonderful journey, I've got a cat coming in there. Before we have a wonderful journey through history, ending with a visit made to the palace in 2016 by the then Duchess of Cambridge. I can't believe how much history Gareth got through in this book. And it was all done in such an entertaining and at times poignant way. So many people's stories were told and I particularly loved the stories of those who lived in the grace and favour accommodation at the palace. People who called the palace home and saw it very differently to its royal owners or the public visiting it. I loved little snippets like servants' children getting into trouble in Victorian times for defacing works of art like those by Holbein, and grace and favour children graffitiing the no smoking signs, and their parents having boozy picnics in the grounds and nearly burning down centuries old trees. Others having seances or actually complaining about the resident ghosts. And then people like Michael Faraday and his wife just loving the palace as their home. One poignant tale was that of the unknown warrior, whose tomb is of course found in Westminster Abbey. What I didn't know was that his coffin was made from a royal tree, an oak from the Hampton Court Palace estate. The Fallen Oak was one of my very favourite chapters in the book and I just loved how Gareth told the story of the Unknown Warrior. Now I visited Hampton Court Palace so many times 
but the next time I go, I will view it with very new eyes. I've only ever been interested in the Tudor bits before, but Gareth's book has given me a new understanding of the palace's history, a new appreciation for what later royals did to it. And I know that as I wander around it now, I'll be transported back in time and probably find myself chuckling to myself as my mind conjures up some of the episodes from Gareth's book, the bad behaviour of some of its residents. Now, I won't share any more as I don't want to spoil the book for you, but do put this on your to-read list. It's a delight. It really is. The Palace was published in the UK by William Collins in hardback in August 2023. Um, I believe it comes out over the pond in December. It has beautiful colour plates. Let me just show you. So that's the start of a section there. So it's got quite a few of those colour plates and it's fully referenced with a bibliography and it has well over 400 pages, I think nearly 500 pages, and also includes some useful royal family trees. I will add the blurb for you in the description as well so that you can read that. Thank you for joining me. I hope to do these regularly, but definitely put this on your to-read list. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.